There's a lot of valuable loot in Last Epoch, and knowing what to pick up is kind of important. To be clear, this is not a video on loot filters or loot filtering. If you want that video, I'll link it up in the card and down below, and you can watch it after this. This is for the next step. All right, you've picked up a bunch of items. They're all sitting in your inventory. They showed up on your filters, so there has to be some redeeming quality. But how do you know it's good? How do you know it's an upgrade? And what's the best item available? Like with many things, the answer is, it depends. It depends a lot on your build. Are you Circle of Fortune or Merchant Skilled? And how geared are you? And so I'm not gonna answer every question you have today. But hopefully, after watching this video, you'll at least have a better idea of what you pick up being valuable and not. And I'll try to also talk about different stages in the game. Now recently, I swapped my Warlock from Bleed to Torment, and I swapped from Merchant's Guild to Circle of Fortune. By the way, get subscribed if you want to see more information on Torment Warlock, as I'll be talking about it in the near future. But as a result, I had to fully regear, redo my filter and all that. But as a result of that, I have to fully regear. And so I'm also going to talk about, towards the end of a video, some items that I picked up and why I think they're valuable or not. So first thing, you need to look at the basic properties. If you're looking at a unique, does it have legendary potential? In general, at least in terms of gearing and power, uniques with legendary potential are more valuable than those without. And from there, you have to look at a little bit more of a big picture. Is it something for your build right now? If yes, well, then it should be reasonably easy to decide if it's an upgrade. You're probably wearing a similar one. Does this have better rolls, higher LP? Can you make it into an awesome legendary? If it's not an upgrade for your build, do the stats look like they're beneficial for any build you might want to play? Maybe you want to play a spark charge build. Well, look for things that say spark charge or lightning damage, or maybe even intelligence, because, well, it's a mage. Might scale off intelligence. You might scale off mana. You can always throw out the gear later if it doesn't turn out to be useful. And while there's a lot of unique items in Last Epoch, it doesn't hurt to keep one of each just in case you need it later. Now, when it comes to rare gear, honestly, only look at it if it's a direct upgrade for your character. Rare gear, even tier 20, is incredibly common. You'll find a lot of it as you play, and especially if you're Circle of Fortune, you'll find so many exalted items that it quickly becomes outdated. So if it's not a direct upgrade, it's probably not good. The exception being if you're a member of a Merchant's Guild and looking to sell it to other players, in which case you should go over to Maxwell GG, look at some of the builds, and especially look at the public build section, see what's popular, and then basically look for rare gear that matches the stats in those. Now when it comes to exalted items, first, look at a base type. Certain bases, such as a katana, are infinitely more valuable than other swords. That crit melty is very juicy, and having it is going to make your build better if you're a crit build. That's why, going into 1.0, katanas were in fact nerfed. Don't worry, they're fine, they'll cut through anything. But after that, you need to look at the Exalted mod. This is especially important if you want to turn it into a Legendary. The goal should always be to get the Exalted mod on your Legendary. If it's something useful to your build, great. If it's something you can make work, like let's say you're missing a bunch of resistance and it has that res, well, it might not be your best in slot, but it's really good for now. And there's also certain pieces that are generically powerful or useful. For example, hybrid health is a really good affix to have. So if you have any item with tier six or seven hybrid health, it's certainly worth considering, even if you don't need it right now, or maybe you're using a legendary in that slot, so you literally can't use it. And then last up, the rest of the stats on the item. Because it doesn't matter how good the base is or how good the exalted mod is, Sometimes the rest of the item is junk, in which case the best thing you can do with it is throw it into the Temporal Sanctum and try to make a legendary. In that case, it's disappointing and it's quite likely to brick, but hey, that one LP item probably wasn't getting any better anyway. In some cases, you will be able to craft things up. And in fact, I have videos on how to make legendaries and how to craft bases that you can watch after this. But in a lot of cases, unfortunately, it is just a brick if it doesn't roll with good mods. And so now with all that said, I'm gonna take a look at a few of the items that I've picked up recently. Now that I've given some examples of things you might wanna pick up off the ground, what does it look like when you actually do it and why are those items valuable? Overall, the focus here is going to be valuable for builds. In other words, I don't know if these items are 10 million gold or zero gold. And in fact, depending on when you're watching this video, it's probably gonna change from when I'm recording it in terms of values. The economy is dynamic. But what I can tell you is, 
why a build might want an item, which in theory over time will relate to its value. So here's a bunch of stuff that I've picked up recently. The first thing that you can see is unique items. Is Bloodroost particularly valuable? Well, if a lot of people are playing Bleed Falconer, or if you personally want to play Bleed Falconer, I'd say yeah. I mean, 39% increased minion movement speed helps your Falcon stay mobile. It gives a bunch of bleed chance. And in fact, it lets your Falcon have ridiculous amounts because it's basically doubling yours. And you even get health per dexterity when your Falcon hits an enemy, helping with healing. But I'm not playing Bleed Falconer, and it's not particularly meta, though it's trash. On the other hand, Jelcor's Blast Knife with one legendary potential. LP uniques tend to be a little bit rarer. This is something that's more likely to sell to another player. Well, sort of. The market's kind of broken right now, but that's a story for another time. And because LP uniques are rarer, I would say yes, this is a moderately valuable thing. Also, if you wanted to play melee detonating arrow with blast rain, you'll need not one of these, but probably two of these. Symbol of Demise. It's okay. It's an okay mid-tier unique. If it's useful to you personally, hold on to it. If not, it might sell for a bit, but it's not super important. Troika's Teeth. Not that many people play Frostbite Bow builds, but it does have pretty good bow cold damage and cold damage on it. So it can still definitely be used, especially since it has legendary potential. Slam a good item into it and hope for good mods. For something like this, it's often used as an LP base, 2, 3, and 4 LP versions are much more valuable. 1 LP, probably not as much, but if you can directly use it, well, there you go. And the same kind of thing with Harbinger of the Stars. It's a powerful item, but it's very niche, so it doesn't get used a ton. But okay, enough with the uniques. What about some exalted items, such as this? Well, Arvin Mana Stacking Acolytes. I don't know of any personally. So I'd say this probably has pretty low value. And that's why it doesn't have a special color in my filter. I'm not really looking for it. Whereas something I might look for, it's this nice pink, like this. A lot of crit builds want crit multi. And a crit multi base with intelligence, with crit multi as an affix, is really, really good. This is a very powerful and valuable item. Anytime the affixes on a base align with the affixes explicitly available, that's a good thing. Even better if the other modifiers are useful, which in this case, sort of. Elemental damage, all right, maybe your crit Ellie build, necrotic res, you probably need it somewhere even if it isn't ideal here. On the other hand, you have this. Lightning damage, mana regen, cooldown recovery, void res. It's pretty generic, but not very exciting. So aside of the fact that this is a good base, I wouldn't say it's valuable unless it's the exact upgrade that you need. On the other hand, this staff is really interesting because it gives plus one to elemental skills, and it has pretty high base spell damage, and it has increased damage over time. So if you're playing some sort of spell elemental damage over time build, it's entirely possible that this would be a very good upgrade for you. Getting skill levels can sometimes be the difference between getting a big old node, completely rearranging something to gain utility, or just not quite being there. But on the other hand, for a lot of dot builds, it's not an ideal base. So if you're not utilizing the elemental skills, I'd actually call it medium or low value. Whereas something like this is really interesting, but incredibly niche. So it's a double exalted katana, that's two T6 mods, but it's only really used for a bleed build. And it's a bleed build that has to be able to utilize crit, which if I'm remembering correctly, there is salt the wound. And I believe that does convert crit over into fizz pen with bleed. So it supports an archetype. There's even an open suffix for chance to bleed. But unless you are some sort of crit bleed build, this isn't useful. On the other hand, if crit bleed builds are popular, I could see this being incredibly valuable if you're a member of a merchant guild. And so that's what I do to look for valuable items. Again, my focus is primarily for Circle of Fortune or self-found here. Builds that I want to play, direct upgrades, that kind of thing. 
though I did try to include a little bit of information on what to look for if you are playing Merchant's Guild. Also, if you're playing Merchant's Guild, I'm so sorry. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, it's been buffed enough that that joke doesn't make sense anymore. Now, it can be easy to collect everything out of FOMO, and I would caution against collecting absolutely everything, because at some point, you're not going to need the eighth pair of boots. But there are a few things that tend to be very, very valuable and generic. For example, movement speed on boots is used in a ton of builds. In fact, you could say it's pretty universal. And so, movement speed boots are generally very good. Crit multi is also very valuable and used across a lot of builds. So, having a good item with crit multi is something worth keeping, even if you're not using it immediately. And some of the top tier bases like falconry armor are so rare, but if it drops with a good mod, you should absolutely pick it up and keep it, even if you're not playing that build right now. Or, you know, go sell it for all the gold if you're merchant skilled. Now, in general, when you're first starting out, even rare items can be pretty big upgrades. But as you continue to gear, you'll start looking only for unique items and exalted items. Then you'll only look for LP unique items and really good exalted items that have double T6, T7, or T6 in good mods, maybe select T6s that are filling the exact holes in your build. Which means, over time, you're going to need to make your filter stricter and stricter, at least for a build that you're actually playing. Just remember to turn all that strictness off when you reroll to something else. And so that said, I'm curious, what are your experiences with loot in Last Epoch? Do you think it's overwhelming, or is it just the right amount? And have you had trouble picking up stuff and finding out it's not as valuable as you thought? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. If you're looking for something else to watch, I mentioned several videos through the course of this one. You can check out those. Links are up in the card and down below. Personally, I would at least recommend checking out the target farming guide so that you know how to get the awesome loot. With that said, I'd like to take a minute to thank my patrons and channel members for the continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you can help make videos just like this one possible. And direct support like that is far more impactful than something like AdSense, which is notoriously unreliable and can just go away at a moment's notice. Link to support is down below. And also, thank you to everyone who made it to the end. I hope you enjoyed. Good luck in finding all your items. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you again in the next one.